This is televangelist Mario Murillo, and he has found himself right in the middle of a weird little televangelist war happening at the moment. He actually declared the war himself. Check this out. Early December 2022, he calls out another pretty famous televangelist. Anyone that said that something was going to turn out a certain way, and it didn't, should be labeled a false prophet. Dude, I love it. Yes, absolutely. This is fantastic. I'm so on board with this guy. Unfortunately, what do they call it? Testicular fortitude? I think that's how televangelists tend to phrase it when you don't bow down to Donald Trump and his golden idol that he had built. Anyway, it's a shame he doesn't seem to have the testicular fortitude necessary to just call him out by name. But trust me, I watch this world pretty closely. I know exactly who he's talking about. So we'll get there in a second. The point currently is that he's calling out false prophets right keep listening with this thought in mind those who live in glass houses should not throw stones check this out if if somebody said there's going to be a red tsunami and we get a pink leaky faucet then you got to look at them and say why am i following them absolutely i i love it that is so on point what he's saying here i do want to point out though that he's part of kind of a, I don't know, a conglomerate or something. It's like a big group of other televangelists that all work together and give out ridiculous false prophecies all the time. And I'm about to show you a false prophecy that Mario Murillo himself has given. The person in frame here with Mario Murillo in this next video, this is Hank Kuneman, okay? In the background, you can kind of see like Gene Bailey, and I think behind them is Lance Walna. These are all televangelists that all work together in, in this group. I don't know what you would call it, a conglomeration of some sort. And they all prophesy and claim that God is speaking directly to them, and they're delivering messages from God himself. And this group of televangelists that he hangs out with prophesied that Donald Trump is going to win the 2020 election. They prophesied that there's going to be a red wave. I'm talking the people in this frame that work with Mario Murillo. Now, he's not criticizing any of them. They're his friends. He's not turning it back around on himself and looking in the mirror at all the false prophecies he's given. He was looking for an angle of attack against somebody very specific. We'll get to her in just a second. But check out an example of Mario Murillo blatantly, unabashedly lying to his audience. July 1st, 2022. He goes to this event and this happens. I'm only allowed to say one thing to this lady in the pink. Only allowed by God. God is only giving him the opportunity to speak to her, to deliver a single message to her. He's completely full of it. God, I, we're one sentence in and this is pissing me off. Okay. Take one of your hands, put it on your stomach. There are actually three places in your body that this thing is grown in. But this is not somebody he knows. This isn't somebody who, like, had an extended conversation with him or anything. This is just some rando in the audience that he picked out. Just say, oh, yeah, this lady in the pink doesn't even know her name. And he's making things up about her. And it is cancer. Now, I need you to take your hand off your stomach, put it right below your neck, right there. And the third one is small. It's just growing a little bit right now. But God's going to take them all out. by. This is just completely made up. He's pretending to faith heal people. And she is buying it. She's crying right now. This is a false prophet. He said God told him to give this woman a message that she has cancer in these various different places and that he's going to fix the problem immediately. This disgusting stuff dude seriously and he has the gall to come out here and call out other people for being false prophets ridiculous that's gonna take them all out by the root hey, everybody there's three 
She has cancer in three different places in her body. She has what is stomach cancer? Um, uh, what is heart cancer? I don't even know what kind of cancer would form there. And where's the other cancer? Did he name that? I mean, it's completely made up, and it's truly, honestly disgusting that he's taking advantage of people's emotions this way. You need faith right now, young lady. I want you to look at me because you need to be convinced that what I'm saying, I can't possibly know. So take that hand. It was on your stomach, and it's now here. The third one is on the side, on this side. And it's, yes, exactly right. And, and you are being healed. Now. And now you know what happens. She goes to a doctor, gets like x-rays and MRIs and all that other stuff. And they show absolutely nothing. And she says, hey, it's a miracle from God. God said he cured me. There is no cancer. Look at that. Proof that God exists. Proof that he works miracles and that Mario Murillo is a real prophet. This is the con. Once you see the con that they run, you can't unsee it. It's ridiculous. Everybody yes. say, oh, Mario, this crazy talk, crazy talk. You have no idea how many times I've watched women like this go to their doctor and the x-rays show there's nothing there. Yeah. Fantastic. Do it. Take her right now. That You know, that's what it would take to convince me that you were actually a prophet of God and that God was real in the whole nine yards. Y if you could prove to me that that you had never met this woman before in your life, you didn't she didn't turn in any prayer cards at the beginning of this. Nobody from her life had ever spoken to you. There was no way you could have possibly known anything about this. You take her to a doctor tonight measure the tumor and, and he's accurate that there really are three you measure them you find out how big they are you go back a month later and they are small or not even there in the first place that might be enough to convince me that he's not lying and taking advantage of people but wouldn't you know it they can never actually take that step of proving that the stuff that they say is not nonsense they can never come out and show you evidence that they know what they're talking about and what they're doing. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really care if Mario Murillo has a problem with other false prophets. I don't really care what problems he has with them. I care that he lives in a glass house and he's throwing stones. That's really what I care about. Now let me introduce you to Kat Kerr. It, so it feels like a pivot, but I promise this relates to the story. Just bear with me through this. You may know Kat Kerr from this famous video from 2019 when I, I think Hurricane Dorian maybe was about to run into Florida. I think I don't remember. Anyway, Kat Kerr goes out there and swings her little stick around and yells at the hurricane. Watch this. So right now at this moment, we take authority over Dorian that has no right off the coast of this state or anywhere. And we hit that storm to the east right now. And I'm going to do it three times. We hit it to the east. We hit it to the east. And so anyway, obviously that didn't do anything. Uh, Dorian still did a lot of damage, unfortunately. I would love it if Kat Kerr were capable of ordering weather around like this in God's name. But uh, she, sadly, she's just not. Sadly, she's just making all this up just like Mario Murillo was. Here's where it ties back in. It just so happens that the person that Mario Murillo is calling out is Kat Kerr. Now, we're going to talk about exactly what he's calling out with Kat Kerr in a second, but listen to this next section of the video where he starts criticizing Kat Kerr. Again, never names her, but gives us enough information that it couldn't possibly be about anybody else. Check this out. Why am I listening to them? When they start telling you the bizarre things that they said they saw in heaven, that's, you know, look, that's the same as the six foot rule. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. What the hell is a six foot rule? I have never heard of this in my entire life, but okay. I, I must know. What is the six foot rule? I have to know what this is. What is the six foot rule? It's a rule of thumb 
in construction basically requires that fall protection be provided when work occurs at heights of six feet or greater above a lower level. Okay, I... Oh, wait a minute. Is he, talk is he talking about social distancing? I think that's what he's referring to, social distancing. Okay, let me listen to that one more time. Uh, you know, stay six feet away during a pandemic. This is stuff we figured out back in... Uh, how long? The 400s or something? I don't even remember how long ago. That's, you know, look, that's the same as the six-foot rule. Doesn't make any sense. It does actually make sense, but okay. Okay. Well, Mario, prove to me that those things aren't in heaven. Easy. They're stupid. <laughs> it is stupid to imagine that that's going to be in heaven. Oh, wow. That's a pretty direct call. -out. What things are stupid to imagine it's in heaven, I hear you asking. That was really the thing that tipped everybody off that he was talking about Cat Kerr because I, well, 2008, I think. Yeah, 2008's when this video came out. This is when she really started coming out of the woodwork and hitting this hard, trying to convince everybody around her that God sent her to Earth to teach people what heaven was like. Now, she's not a nobody. That's why Mario Murillo is talking about her in the first place. She is not a nobody. She's incredibly prominent in the evangelical movement, very well known. And she even helps write curriculums for Christian private schools and stuff like that. That's why he's addressing her. Now, this guy right here, he's met Donald Trump. They have shared a stage before. I don't know if they shared it simultaneously, but they're on the same TV show. This guy's not a nobody. He talks, a, he talks to people, millions of people, you know, every week very well known and prominent in the televangelist community. And he is addressing Kat Kerr. That should tell you something about how important he believes that she is in this movement. So listen to what Kat Kerr has to say. Again, 2008, this is one of the early videos that she released talking about what heaven is like, like he referenced a minute ago. I have to tell you about this revelation. You know what? Heaven is the most fun place you'll ever live in your life. Did you ever think of that? Most people, and including the world, think heaven is going to be so boring. They don't even want to go there. Most believers actually say, what in the world am I going to do for eternity? What is it going to do up there besides bowing to God and maybe singing some songs with the choirs in heaven? I'm really surprised she said that. That's like a quick way to get excommunicated from groups, isn't it? Like, oh, you, you think bowing down to God for eternity would be boring? Well, you're not a very good Christian, right? Sitting on a cloud with a harp, guess what? You don't get a harp when you go to heaven unless you already play one. You know, maybe if you want one to decorate your mansion, you might give you one. But what are you going to do with it anyway? Uh, the reason Play it. You're going to play it. What the hell do you think you're going to do with a harp? Seriously? <laughs> what? She's so weird. Uh, the reason my hair is pink, by the way, I forget that a lot. God himself asked me to have pink hair for the, for the reason that you will know heaven is going to be a whole lot more different than we thought it was. He takes me nonstop on tours of heaven so you can know what's really there. And, the and you needed to have pink hair to communicate this to everybody? This is just weird, dude. The thing he asked me, the very first thing he said is, your assignment is to make heaven so real they could feel like they could live there and they have to know it is going to be fun. He, he did, did tell you, you... What if I don't want to have fun when I get to heaven? What if I want to think? What if I want to be a learner? What if I want to understand how the universe works? I don't want to go on roller coaster or ride lava waves. No joke. She says this. I'm describing things she talks about. I don't make what do I, what if I don't want to do all that stuff? This is the heaven that she wants to go to. I don't know how this caught on. She wasn't this is what she's famous for describing heaven. How did all of this catch on? Top tier screenshot right here by the by. Tell you you had to be like a little child to enter into the kingdom of heaven and he didn't say that because it was going to be sober and profound. No, it says that the Bible says you have to be like a little child because it means you need to be innocent. You need to be sinless, basically, right? That's what they, it was trying to communicate. Is she trying to twist the Bible around to make it say that you were going to have fun? See, this is what I find so fascinating. This is a perfect example of them taking the exact same Bible verse 
and twisting it around to suit their purposes. They're changing the meaning of words arbitrarily to make it seem like they are correct about what they already believe. This is the entirety of Christianity. This is what Christianity is all about. Twisting things around just a little bit to make it seem like it supports what you already think. I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses throughout their history have tweaked one or two words. They have their own translation of the Bible, and they've changed one or two words here or there. Not much, not even enough to notice practically, but just a couple words here or there out of the, I don't know, 32,000 verses in the Bible and the, what, millions of words in the Bible, certainly, right? They've just changed a couple. But changing those couple of words is all it took to twist things around and make it seem like the Bible supports dramatically different ideology than it actually implies. Serious. He said that because you will act and feel like a little kid. So anyway, yeah, that's Kat Kerr, and that's why Mario Marilla was calling her out. Or that's why we believe that he was calling her out. He was very obviously referring to Kat Kerr, in my opinion. I mean, listen again. That's, you know, look, that's the same as the six-foot rule. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, Mario proved to me that those things aren't in heaven. Easy. They're stupid. It is stupid to imagine. Is it really that simple to, like, debunk something, but you just call it stupid and there, boom, you're done? They said, prove it to them, not call it stupid. Anybody can call it stupid. This guy obviously has no basis for, like, logical deduction or argumentation or anything, right? Just comes in and calls things stupid. It is stupid to imagine that that's going to be in heaven. So, anyway, yeah, I'm 99% sure that's who he's referring to. She is, like, famous for this. Before we continue, I just wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. Or you can check out my Telltale Unfiltered channel. I go through long-form, unhinged sermons from all kinds of people, from Hank Kuhneman to Greg Locke to Jehovah's Witnesses. So give it a look. Links are in the description. Okay, now back to the video. Listen to the next part of him, like, addressing Kat Kerr. And it's not an amusement park. The false prophets were sent at a key moment to distract the church. That's fascinating. So he views her as a false prophet, despite the fact that he falsely prophesies all the time, constantly, like straight up lies, claims that God told him something. And then that thing does not come true. The Bible is pretty clear about how you tell when somebody is a false prophet or not. And that's one of them right there. When they say something that does not come to pass, they are a false prophet. God did not tell them that thing. And you shouldn't be afraid of them. You should pay them no mind. You shouldn't listen. I mean, just for good measure, though, let's listen to this next section of the Cat Kerr video. They even have a place called Cartoon Village, and you can just guess what happens there. You get to create your own cartoon, and then you're in the cartoon as a cartoon. Isn't that fun? Just think, I think every kid living in heaven has probably experienced that. You say, how can that possibly be? Because it's not Earth, all right? Okay, it's stupid. He's right. He's absolutely right. I got to give it to him. You know, it is stupid. I will be damned if it's not entertaining, though. That is deeply funny to me. Not for nothing, but this is actually the guy that was sitting in the background behind uh, Mario Murillo in one of the original videos that we watched earlier of him claiming the woman had cancer or whatever. This is Lance Walna. He's sitting behind Mario. And he doesn't seem to like Kat Kerr very much either. This is from January 22nd, 2021. It's pretty old. He, they have not really liked Kat Kerr for a while. Ministers are busy obsessing over a woman with pink hair who... It's fascinating to me that they won't just come out and name her, right? But there are so many more evangelical, like, televangelists out there who support Kat Kerr, who do events with her, like Robin Bullock or Johnny Enlow, a, like a billion of them. Matter of fact, Kat Kerr is actually close with the Trump family. She knows Eric Trump. 
I mean, she's prophesied over a ton of people like this. These people are not nobodies. They are very well connected. But I do wonder why they won't call her by name. Why do they keep referring to the person with pink hair? That's kind of weird, right? Ministers are busy obsessing over a woman with pink hair who refuses to recant her prophecy that Trump will be in office. You know, prophets lose their own credibility with rational people after a while. Yeah, they do. Don't think Lance Wallna is innocent in this. He most definitely made all kinds of prophecies about stuff. Although I think he's more of a calculating type of televangelist. The type of person to do things in very specific ways and say things in specific ways with a very specific intent to get a very certain thing done. Yeah, I don't I don't trust Lance Wellna at all. He is not a good person as far as I'm concerned. He will do absolutely anything to accomplish his goals of bringing in a Christian nationalist state. He describes himself openly as a Christian nationalist. And that includes what Jehovah's, uh, what Jehovah's Witnesses would call theocratic warfare. Lying, cheating, stealing, manipulating, whatever it takes to accomplish your goals. It's justified because you're doing it for God. The ends justify the means. That's Lance Walna's view on the world. And that makes him especially dangerous. So anyway, keep listening to what he says about Kat Kerr here. After a while they have to recognize that they missed it. The prophets tend to um, end up exposing themselves because if they prophesy something that doesn't happen, don't you think they know it didn't happen? And the Mets will win the World Series. Well, what if they don't? I'm holding on. God told me and they're going to win. It may take a year, but they'll be winning it. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in elections either. This is fascinating because this is the day after Biden was inaugurated, and this is the tune that he was singing. He was calling for Kat Kerr to rescind her prophecy about Trump winning the election or whatever, right? He's completely changed his tune. Lance Walna has shared a stage with Donald Trump or the Trump family also. Trump goes on the, his TV show all the time, Flashpoint. They are on their together all the time calling in or or somebody from the trump family calls in or shows up to their studio and does events with them and stuff like that lance walnut most definitely supports donald trump and the election conspiracies now so i'm kind of it's kind of interesting to look back and see what he was saying at the time and and kind of condemning her for making the prophecy in the first place when he supports that kind of thing now but you know what just for good measure let's watch a little bit of cat kerr prophesying about the election since they brought it up since mario morello and lance walna both criticized cat kerr for prophesying about elections check this out this is just a little compilation once again trump will win and triumph in the white house for all those who've been praying for that yes he's going to win god has already chosen him to win again and begin to pray for Pence, who will step in right behind him for eight years. Because I can tell you that Pelosi and all the others who think they have power, it's about to be stripped away. And they have no future because Trump is going to win. Remember, this is before 2020. Pelosi was the Speaker of the House for two more years after that. That's not even going to wait to the end of this broadcast. Trump will win in November because he will continue to have justice, liberty, and freedom in America. America belongs to God. I know the thought and intent of everything. I know every hidden act of wickedness, and it will be exposed. And Trump will sit in that White House for four more years. God has adamantly told me he will win despite the, the crimes and the things that they're committing, trying to make it happen for Biden, people want somebody who knows what they're doing and has hope for this country, and Trump will win on November 3rd. It just goes on and on, dude. I have like two more minutes of this, or one more minute of this specifically. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. She even claimed to have time-traveled to the future. God brought her into the future. And she saw people yelling and cheering and yelling Trump's name, saying, Donald Trump is president. Yay. 
throwing their hats in the air and celebrating and dancing around because Trump won the election in 2020. That's what she said. Granted, Mario Murillo was correct when he said it's stupid and ridiculous. I wish he'd add a little more substance to it. There's no substance to what he said, but it was stupid. Deeply entertaining, don't get me wrong. Entertaining to watch her go completely off the rails and predict that Donald Trump is going to win the election over and over and over again. But yeah, I got to give it to Mario. It was stupid. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, should I cover more of Mario Murillo and Kat Kerr's shenaniganery? Tell me what you think. Emily Sigmund, damn, Kerr's been rocking that hairstyle since at least 2008. Yeah, absolutely. That was crazy, right? When I found that, I was kind of blown away by it. Quite the haircut. Also, are, are these sequins that she's wearing? I, I don't know what this is that's like wrapped around her neck and uh, on her jacket here. I think those are... So that is that some kind of a sequin something or other? I like the leather jacket. That's pretty snazzy, right? How are none of Cat Kerr's heaven fantasies in the Bible? I That's weird, right? None of them in the Bible. Odd. Almost like she completely made them up. But people buy it. People believe what she says. It blows me away. Emily Sigmund, I feel like Cat Kerr's entire persona comes from her desperately wanting to be liked while not actually being a very likable person. Yeah, I think that's very possible and she put on this whole facade of being really really fun like a fun person to be around she's just so fun oh she also claims she never sins never that's a pretty tall claim that's very oppositional to you know some fundamental teachings in christianity jesus is supposed to be the only human being to have never sinned to be perfect right but Kat Kerr claims that she's perfect also. That's that's nuts. That is absolutely crazy. Again, she writes curriculums for private schools. She has shared a platform with Donald Trump Jr. Or, I'm sorry, with Eric Trump. She's shared a platform with Eric Trump and others. In Cartoon Village, Kat Kerr takes on her true form, right? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Great Big Rand's own cartoon... I can make my own hentai. You could if that's what you chose. No, no. She says there are rules about the types of videos that you can make in heaven and that you're allowed to watch. Like, there are regulations about it that God won't let you break, basically. I, I'm dead serious. She says that in this video. There's a longer form of this video. Yeah, this is the original. It's six minutes long. It's six minutes of her talking about going to heaven and what it's like and all that other garbage. Tense, a uh, hilarious movies in heaven. If you ever wanted to be, you get to be. You go in the one door of the theater and sit and watch the movie, or you go down the hall in another door and you're literally step into the movie, you're in the movie acting. So how about that? That's a whole lot better than down here on this earth, isn't it? A lot of fun, exciting movies that are shown on the earth actually make it to heaven, but they do have some certain criteria you have to meet. There you go. That's what I was talking about. You never see anything defiling, disgusting, vile, no sexual content, no profanity, no crude humor. Isn't that wonderful? Just No, it sounds miserable. Why would I want to watch a movie like that? It's awful. So, yeah, bad news, great big rants. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> not because Kat Kerr is a nutter butter who's detached from reality and is completely making this stuff up but because in the fantasy land that she fabricated for everybody, you're not allowed to have that kind of thing. So, yeah, sorry. 